You're watching SRJC News, a production of the Media 19 Multicamera Studio Class. It is Thursday, October 26, 2017. Hello and welcome to a special edition of SRJC News. I'm Sasha. And I'm Aurelia. Today we'll be taking a look at the devastating wildfires that swept through Santa Rosa in what has become the most destructive fire in California state history and the most expensive fire in United States history. Just before 10 p.m. on Sunday, October 8th, the fire began just west of Calistoga. This map from the New York Times illustrates how quickly this fire spread. By midnight, the fires the area between Calistoga and Santa Rosa were under mandatory evacuation. 50 mile an hour winds pushed the fires south, causing them to spread rapidly and unpredictably. By 1 a.m., there were multiple fatalities as wildfires destroyed neighborhoods such as Fountain Grove and Wikiup. For many Sonoma County residents, the next several days were full of anxiety and chaos. More than 50,000 people were evacuated. 11,000 firefighters from across the state and beyond rushed to the area to battle the raging fires. SRJC journalism and digital media student began covering the fires almost immediately. These are some of their pictures. You can see a variety of interviews and student-produced news packages on the Oak Leaf website, theoakleafnews.com. Media 20 student Forrest Mornane was one of many evacuated from his, son, from his home Sunday night. Alone in his car with his camera, he decided to document what he saw. Take a look at his dram dramatic footage. Yeah. Pretty much this hit shelter now I'm here. Scared. Now I'm freaked out because, like, you know, I mean, you don't expect this to happen in Santa Rosa city limits. That's the freaky part. And major road closures, yeah. like, you know, not knowing. But there were a lot of explosions. The transformers were blowing up. We thought it was a war zone. We literally had about five minutes to get our staff and get out. Just get the essentials and get out the door. And Well, I heard a crash, so I went outside and my gar I put the garbage out for the garbage man. I went outside and there was gar and I was picking up all my garbage and this guy drove by and said, you better get out of here now, right now. And so I looked up and I, all these ashes that were on fire were coming at me. So I got my car, I started to drive out and I was stuck for like half an hour. And then, and I looked down the street and the houses were totally on fire, totally on fire, coming right at us. And finally, I got around the corner, and then I came all the way here from not too far away. It took me like almost two hours to get here. I just have never experienced anything like this. I've been in the in the state for about two years now. 
I've heard about like the Lake County fire, um, and um, it's just it's just scary. I mean, earthquakes and fires. This is this is definitely a, a life-altering experience for myself and my son. It's been more than two weeks now since the fires first began, and only now are the fires considered under control at 95% containment. The destruction they have caused is massive. 42 people have died, many of them elderly. 8,400 structures have burned completely, 5,500 of them homes. The SRJC has been responding to the fires in a variety of ways. Joining us live in the studio, is Robert Ethington from Santa Rosa Junior College being interviewed by Lariva Miles. Thank you, Sasha. Robert, thanks for joining us today. Good to be here. Could you please tell us how has SRJC specifically been affected by the wildfires and how are they responding? We've been deeply affected, obviously. Uh, the psychological, emotional toll on all of us is happening at different ways to different people and different timelines and that's going to continue to happen. We know that 650 of our students have lost their homes for sure mm -hmm. and we think by the time we have the final numbers it's going to be closer to 900. So uh, add that on top of that 60 employees, 60 faculty and staff administrators who have lost their homes and that's it's devastating obviously. What needs to happen moving forward <clears throat> for the college community to recover? You know I think we need to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we've We've been at this since Monday morning. Uh, the president and uh, the Emergency Operations Center opened on Monday and we've been drafting messages and com communicating with our students and staff. Uh, since then, we have to keep doing that. We have to keep listening. Students want to be communicated with. They've been very responsive to all of our, our texts and our emails, being very clear about what they need us to do and we've been trying to do that. We have to keep listening, keep doing that, keep providing the resources that we're, we're providing. Um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be ongoing, and we're going to have to keep doing it for the rest of the semester, and I would say into spring also. Where should people go if they need help? And where should people go if they want to volunteer or donate? Sure, I would come to the Student Affairs Office, first floor of Bernalini. There, that's kind of the hub, and they can get information. Uh, we, we're, all kinds of resources we're providing. We, we have a laptop program, textbook replacement. We have clothes, we have food, we have mental health counseling, crisis counseling. We can refer to different resources. We have bridged with our community organizations. We have a relief fund that we've started. We're giving out relief grants to students and staff. All of that, if you go to Student Affairs, we can get you in the right direction and get you the right information that you need. If you want to get involved, come there. We can tell you the different places where we need people to volunteer. We can get students plugged in. If you go to SantaRosa.edu, we have a fire and recovery support page that has all the information. We update that daily. And we're just going to keep communicating with folks and come in, see us, and we'll help you or we'll put you to work. <laughs> Robert Ethington, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, Lariva. Thank you, Lariva and Robert. The community has been active in trying to set up support systems for victims of the fire. The SRJC Foundation set up the SRJC Fire Relief Fund. 100% of funds will go to help SRJC students, faculty, and staff who've lost their homes. Donation links are available online through SRJC's website. Student Health Services has compiled a list of resources for those dealing with loss and trauma. Services include free counseling at both the Santa Rosa and Petaluma campuses, as well as virtual and phone-in hotlines. Please visit SRJC's Student Health Services webpage for more information. On Friday, October 27, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., Santa Rosa Junior College will host a hiring fair for the communities impacted by California's wildfires. This event will provide those impacted by local fires with career information and resources to apply for immediate opening with the state of California. Visit SRJC website for more information. People have been finding burnt photos and documents throughout the area as a result of the fires. 
Computer Studies Chair Donald Laird and his son Sutter started a project collecting and scanning these photos and documents. Their website is a clearinghouse to help people locate what may be the last surviving items from their homes. Tickets go on sale Friday for Ben Together, a major concert fundraising event for the fire relief effort. Headliners include Metallica, Dave Matthews, and Oakland rapper g Easy. Ben Together has already raised an initial $6.5 million from founding supporters, Kaiser, Google, The Giants, and others. The concert takes place Thursday, November 11 at AT&T Park. SRJC's student newspaper, The Oak Leaf, has been reporting on the fire since it started. Joining us today to tell us about their coverage is Oak Leaf reporter Brandon McCapes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sasha. Brandon, thanks for coming in today and talking with us. Thanks for having me. You were one of the first reporters covering the fire. Tell us about your experience. So I... Uh, I was woken up by my roommates on Monday morning and I decided I had to go cover the fires so I drove up uh, as far north as I could to uh, Kaiser Hospital and, and filmed uh, <clears throat> Journey's End Mobile Home Park burning down. After that I met up with uh, my editor-in-chief uh, Ollie Benzerara and we went around all day uh, filming houses burning down and, and the police and how everyone was responding it and that really set the tone for the week and we were out there, about eight of us were out there every day reporting from our homes, covering what was happening. Wow. Were you out there at the same time that uh, other stations and were it's, out there? Or? So on Monday, we actually, we actually uh, beat Cron 4 to a couple locations. Um, and, and throughout the week, we were definitely in the same finding ourselves in the same places that the networks were getting to. Mm. I noticed on some of the news coverage and on local stations that um, the Oak Leaf uh, microphone was there along with all the other major news stations and as a student here I was really happy to see that. Yeah we actually uh, stole the spot of one of the networks and that they they got there after us and weren't able to hook their mic up so we were kind of happy about that but yeah we were at all the press conferences talking with all the officials, Cal Fire, uh, the mayor, uh, everyone, anyone that would talk to us uh, to try and get a, the best most thorough coverage we could get of this disaster. Well, thanks for taking the initiative and going out and getting the news. We really appreciate you speaking with us today, Brandon. Thank Absolutely. You. Thanks for having me. This fire has made a sudden and traumatic impact on our community, one we will be carrying for years to come. Join us next time as we hope to look deeper into more stories, more issues, and hopefully some ways to help our community rebuild. In the meantime, Stay strong, SRJC. You've been watching SRJC News, a production of the Media 19 Multi-Camera Studio Class, Thursday, October 26, 2017.